Good evening, everybody. This is Zachary Weiss here from PSN, and I have a special guest with me. It is Robert Morris football coach Bernard Clark Jr. Bernard, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. Everything is going well. I can't complain at all. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, obviously, but the last 24 to 48 hours have been a very much a whirlwind, as they are for every football coach across America. Just, I guess, in COVID times, just what would you say regarding the process with the recruiting and how everything went for you uh, yesterday and today? Actually, it went very well. The assistant coaches did a very good job of recruiting the guys, staying in touch with them. Zoom calls were outstanding. Uh, virtual meetings, virtual <laughs> tours, everything went well and meeting with parents as much as we could and it turned out to be pretty doggone good. How much of a challenge was it just recruiting when maybe you don't get to see that face to face and maybe with recruiting challenges whether it's shutdowns or pauses or whatever the case is and navigating through those circles? Well that's the toughest thing when you can't go sit in a young man's home and speak with his parents and look in their eyes and tell them exactly how you feel about their son and tell them the things that you want to help him become a better man, a better husband, and a better father. When you're talking to him about things like that, you have to do it over a Zoom call. It's a little bit tougher because parents want to sit and talk with you and see what's going on and look in your eyes and say, hey, I'm giving my son to you. Or are you going to take care of him? And you want to be able to say those things in front of him. That was the toughest part, you know, recruiting a young man and not being able to sit in his home and talk with his parents. What would you say was your approach to recruiting before coming to Robert Morris and how would you say it's changed or has it even stayed more firm since you've come to Robert Morris? Well, my approach as a head coach, I watch a lot more film. Uh, before I watched film just of the positions I was recruiting, but now I watch everyone. I want to make sure that everybody that we say yes to, I watch film on them, I watch uh, highlights on them, I watch game film on them. I want to make sure I'm studying them as much as I can. I also want to get as much background as we possibly can. When it comes to recruiting, we do what's called a 70-30. And the 70-30 means 70% of our guys who want them to be multiple sport athletes, maybe captains of the team, make sure they maintain over 3.0 GPA, a strong family background. Uh, again, captain of a team could be the social worker talking good about it, the counselor talking good about it. Those are the things you go to check out when you go to a high school. And the 30%, one of those things are missing. So that's what we're looking for when we're recruiting young men, a 70-30 approach. And that's what we still look for. And just right now is a little bit tough had to ask those tougher questions over the phone when it came to what's your family household like? You know, what do you do? Try to reach out to the high school coach and try to reach out to the high school counselor and find out what kind of character does this young man have? Because the last thing you want is a young man on your team who's a great athlete, but has real poor character. You don't want a whole lot of turds on your team. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a challenge was it switching, obviously, being a member of the Big South and maybe finding new pipelines and different avenues in that sense? It was good for us because we went a little further south. We got, as a matter of fact, we got three guys from Georgia, which we're really excited about. We reached into Florida a little bit more than we normally would. But overall, Pennsylvania and Ohio are going to still be our best hubs to get guys out of along with Maryland. We're going to move a little further south obviously because we're playing some teams south. But overall, we still want to get those guys from Pennsylvania. We want to get those guys from Ohio and Maryland. Those are going to be our three main hubs. What does it say that you also, I guess, a couple of those guys from Florida also had Canadian ties as well, just being able to establish that connection. And maybe if they do well, it could lead to other things down the road as well. Well, we already have one young man from on our team right now who's from Canada, who we also got from a prep school in Michael Lane. So that was huge for us having Mike here. And we also have some young men on our team that speak French. So that's also another big help for us because we've got some French speaking young men on our team. But the guy that helped us get those two defensive linemen, which are huge, is Shakespeare Lewis. And we uh, got Shakespeare because one of our coaches, you know, had a connection down in Florida at that you know, prep school that he was at. And Shakespeare said, hey, coach, we have two guys on our team you really got to take a look at. So our guys have really been helping us recruit. Whenever things went, we want to. Ryan was also, Ryan Imes was also a young man that was, hey, coach, we really need this guy. I'll reach out to him on Twitter. So our guys are excited about recruiting the same way we were when we were recruiting those guys. How much does that show that as much as calls really are one thing, it really comes down to word of mouth and connect connectivity and positivity? Relationships are always going to be the most important part when it comes to recruiting. You can say to a young man a hundred times, hey, don't choose a school because of a coach. Don't choose a school because of this. Choose a school because you really want to be there. And that's what we tell them. But the bottom line is once those young men have a relationship with you, once they have a connection with you, once they speak to some of their teammates or they speak to some of the guys who've already committed to come to Robert Morris, those are the things that are far more important when it comes to those things like that. Trying to get those guys to make a connection and understand that, hey, we truly do have a family here. 
we want you guys to fit into this family. And those recruits that are reaching out to them, those commits that are reaching out to them, those guys are excited, just like we are about getting those guys on campus. A lot of players also, though, do like that Missouri approach, that show me approach. And Robert Morris obviously had a breakthrough approach last year with how the season went specifically in NEC play. Just how much was it to have that physical piece to the table in addition to what you were able to provide from the well-spoken aspect? Well, Zach, you know and I know. Once you start winning games, people start recognizing. And the fact that we were able to have a winning season for the first time since 2010 was huge for us as a football team. I mean, that kind of opened the doors for us. Some teams start really paying up. Some young men start really paying notice to what we're doing. And we understand that. That's what's going to get fans in the seats. That's what's going to get this. That's what's going to help us move to different conferences. What it boils down to is the more you win, the more people recognize that, and they want to play for you. And our guys played tough last year. Our guys did a great job of playing for one another and playing for us. When you look at recruits, how much do you like flexibility that they're maybe not necessarily married to just one position? Just because they're an O-lineman doesn't mean they're just a center. Just because they're a quarterback doesn't mean they can just drop in the pocket. They can also scramble and tuck the ball when they need to. Just how important is that flexibility, both in terms of ability on field and depth down the road? Well, I'll be honest with you. As you're watching film on high school players and things like that, those things are exactly what you just talked about. When you see an offensive lineman in high school, he's also playing defensive lineman. You see a defensive lineman, he's playing linebacker. Those things are huge. So when you get here, like you said, when a young man can play center, but also can play tackle, you know, like Trevor Rentro, one of our just to throw a name out, Trevor's a guard. He's also a center for us. We played some last year. So those things are huge. And we have that scrambling quarterback, a guy that can drop back in the pocket, but also if he needs to run it and this coach uh, Gabe's going to call some runs every now and then for a quarterback. That guy can make things happen with his feet. And those wide receivers that you can pitch the ball through, DeAndre Hicks is one of those guys who can throw it about 50 yards downfield. So those things become crucial. Those come, things become exciting. And uh, it helps build a good foot, football team. When you look at how the season's structured, obviously the games themselves, if they happen, will happen in the spring. Just how much did that further intensify securing this class early and maybe – providing future connections, whether it's for later commits or in future seasons? And how much maybe with the, that does it make coaches like that kid in the candy store, they take their guy or they take their two guys and they just get put their head down and get to work? Well, probably the most important thing about this spring season, it gives our seniors an opportunity to play this game this year, play football this year. When our guys committed to us, because we were recruiting a lot of these young men that committed to us back in June and early July, they had already committed to us. So that put us in a pickle where, okay, what seniors are we going to bring back? And what seniors we can't, can't we bring back? So that thing became an issue too. But most of our seniors want to play. They want to be a part of this. So it's exciting about the season we're going into. So what's in a little bit of a pickle, but at the same time, our guys are excited about playing this season in the spring. Looking at the number 14, it breaks down eight defensive, six offensive. So kind of a nice, rather even number. Just how nice is that, that everybody kind of has their hand in the cookie jar and that it was kind of even. You get a nice healthy number at 14 and, you kind of take your ball and go from there. Well, the great thing about it is we got the positions that we really needed. We got some defensive linemen. We got some offensive linemen, which is usually the toughest position to get, especially at the FCS level. The FBS has a little easier time of getting those positions, but at the FCS level, it's tough for us sometimes. So for us to get two deep, three defensive ends and Mark Quinn and, and uh, Tristan and, and uh, Nathan, those are three outstanding guys. We feel like going to be able to help us right now. And the offensive line we're able to get with Luke, Dante, and Ryan, those guys are going to help us. So the positions we got were really, really needed. And that's what was exciting about getting those positions. When you pitch to a player, how much do you pitch what they what they can expect and how much do you pitch a program and what the goals are and what your identity is? Well, my most important thing, to be honest with you, Zach, when I'm pitching the guys is I just tell them, honestly, I just want to continue what the parents have done to help them become better men, better husbands, and better fathers. And we use this football as a process to do that. We help them understand that you have to be an outstanding student as well as an outstanding football player to get recruited by Robert Morris. Because regardless of what coach tells you, academics are far more important than football. You know and I know what it boils down to is if a young man couldn't play football, I wouldn't be sitting in this house talking to him. Also, if he didn't have the grades, I wouldn't be sitting in this house talking to him. So both of them are extremely important. So we want them to know when you get here, we're going to make sure you go to class. We're going to follow up on every Monday, make sure you're doing things we need to do on Blackboard. But we're also going to make sure you're in your meetings and making sure you're taking notes in you know, meetings when it comes to football. Football and academics are extremely important at Rob Morris University. So come to college, enjoy yourself, get a degree, most importantly, make sure you get that degree, 
and become a better man, a better husband, and a better father. So those are things we're going to constantly keep talking about and constantly keep preaching at Robert Morris University. Everybody wants to win football games. Everybody wants to make a million dollars. But you know what? It takes hard work to do those things. We want to make sure we're doing those things the right way. When you look at things outside of the commitments, just with the season, just how has it been navigating through these circles and maybe the daily ever-changing process? I'll be honest with you, it's been tough. It's been extremely tough. You know, we started out early. We were able to practice in the summertime, and all of a sudden we had to shut practice down. Then they told us we can go back and practice. We were practicing about three times a week. And next thing you know, we couldn't practice three times a week. We literally have freshmen that really haven't hit anybody yet. We had we were able to do one scrimmage this fall. So we have freshmen who we haven't tackled anybody. We got some transfers here who haven't tackled anybody. So it's a situation they haven't gotten tackled. So it's a situation, it's been tough. It's been a real tough situation. So we're hoping now, because now they've gone home for eight weeks. And so now they're coming back on January 11th and we're gonna start them up again with lifting weights and with meetings and with walkthroughs and all those things. We're gonna be able to see if they can do those things, but it's been a tough situation. But at the same time, we're taking it in stride. It's just the way things are right now. There's no sense getting upset, getting upset, screaming and hollering, being upset. It ain't gonna change anything. It's gonna still be the same way it is right now. So we want to make sure our guys understand we're gonna to continue to work. We're gonna work through it. You know what it boils down to? It's nobody's fault that this happened at all. But it's everyone's responsibility to get back on and get things going. When you circle that January 11th date, your season opener at this moment is scheduled for February 27th. So that gives you roughly a month and a half. Just how much of that is going to be familiarizing contact, playbook, chemistry, just what do you think is the perfect formula for this team? Well, I'll be honest with you. As soon as they get back on January 11th, on January 13th, they'll be with the strength and conditioning coach. They'll get right back at it, get back to lifting and things like that. And on January 15th, we'll be back on the field doing walkthroughs. Make sure we're getting familiar with that playbook and everything else and getting things going. And we really won't start any physical practice or anything like that until around January 29th. We want to make sure our guys are stretch well. We don't have any soft tissue injuries. We want to make sure our strength and conditioning coaches work with them. But also, just like you said, they're also getting back January 11th and they're starting classes. So we got to be careful of that too, because now they got a workload of classes. They got a workload of football. They got a workload of working out. So all those things kick back in the gear. So we got to slowly ease them back into it when it comes to the physical part. But the mental part is going to be kicked in as soon as they get back on campus. Obviously, as a coach, you're always cliche or not excited for this upcoming season. Just considering the hoops, considering the past success this last season, just how excited would you say you and in turn this team are for February 27th? Very excited. There's no doubt we're excited about getting the season started up again. The only thing that makes you a little apprehensive about it, Zach, you know, and I know now we got two seasons in one calendar year. So that becomes the crazy part of it because now when we're done in April, Hopefully we're done in May. We make the playoffs or whatever the situation may be. We got to get right back out there in the latter part of July, early August. So we're jumping right back on the field. So that's the apprehensive part about it. But we're very excited about, you know, especially kicking off with a team like GMU who's going to be in the top 10. We know that. So we're going to get you. Like we said before, our guys are getting right back at it. I mean, they're going to go right back at it when it gets mentally. They're going to get right back into gear as far as school-wise and everything else. And as far as the season goes, we're definitely excited about the season. You know, we're kicking the season off with James Madison. You know and I know they're probably going to be in top 10. Uh, so it's going to be a great challenge for us. We're going to get a chance for us to get started and get started quick. Absolutely. And the Robert Morris season opener, February 27th against that James Madison team. Just we appreciate the time, Bernard, and uh, thanks as always. And I'm sure we'll be in touch down the road. Thanks, Zach. I really appreciate the time. Not a problem.